of this for 37 years. North Korea's nuclear initiative that actually disturbed the situation and changed the whole landscape of the Northeast Asian situation. Um, but let me start first about the development, a short history of the Japanese defense history, uh, defense policy history. Um, Japanese defense policy was modernized uh, when we first adopted the so-called defense build-up guideline, uh, so uh, defense build-up outline in 1976, and the U.S.-Japan security guideline in 1978. These two documents are very important for us to understand the current situation. The, um, the important thing is this U.S.-Japan security guideline uh, this was revised only twice in the past, compared to the outline was revised almost a half dozen times. The reason is, U.S.-Japan relations is such an important framework for the regional security issues. Therefore, it's not easy to change and check year-by-year -year basis. The first time uh, we revised was early 1990s, when we first saw the emergence of North Korea with its missile and nuclear initiatives. And the second one is 2015, uh, three years ago, uh, when we see the emergence of Chinese uh, military power after its continuous 30 years of military development. Of course, as you see, Ch Japan has three major fronts. Or, uh, whether front is the right word or not, uh, a bit skeptical, but uh, our relations with Russia will have territorial issues. No, uh, Korean Peninsula still <coughs> and difficult neighbor of the North Koreans. And China, we have some uh, difficult relations of the Senkak Islands. So, um, as a responsible officer of the defense office, uh, I have to spend attention to all these three areas. In other words, we could say that all these three countries are really the cheerleaders for the defense build-up uh, in a very smooth way against liberal people, uh, convincing that how defense build-up is important in Japan. The difficult situation is the emergence of North Korea nowadays with its nuclear capability. Um, Korean Peninsula is a uh, politically and geographically very difficult place. It has been uh, devastated for many years in the past due to the strong powers of China, Russia, Japan, and finally the United States. But now Korea is emerging as a nuclear uh, initiative and it disturbs the whole situation. In other words, the past wisdom may not be applicable to the current situation. Um, China's issue is another difficult issue. China was a country who first gave Japan the sense of security back to 7th century. And the emergence of the Tang Dynasty at the time we had some commitment over the Korean Peninsula, but we lost the war badly and retreated from the Korean Peninsula. And since then, China stayed as a major uh, security issues for the Japanese uh, past, past uh, administration. But it became quite clear and difficult for us, particularly after 1996, when uh, Taiwan uh, showed the sign of possible independence, and China uh, launched missiles over Taiwan. As you remember, about 20 years ago, the United States launched two, missile, uh, two aircraft carriers over there and pushed things down. And that actually devastated China's face, and they started building up the Navy uh, ever since. We see big China, but the important point I learned from my seniors is how to stabilize the region with U.S. Japan and China amongst these three countries' relations. That is quite simple. China is stronger than Japan, but U.S.-Japan should be stronger than China. The difficult situation that we face now is both the United States and Japan 
are facing the fiscal difficulty, not sufficient money to keep a meter bid up. So what we decided, the Japanese side, is to get more, say, in a sense, a software type of approach. That was the reason why we uh, took three important initiatives in 2015. The first one is to um, update the U.S.-Japan security guideline in order to face the developing situations in the Northeast Asia. The second one is uh, passing the new regulation named Peace and Security Act, which enabled Japanese initiatives of the collective self-defense right. In other words, this enabled us to work closer with the United States military. The third is uh, reorganize the Minister of Defense, give more uh, flexibility to the JCS side for operation, and also set up the new organization named ATRA for defense equipment issues, and make it feasible for us to start arms transfer business. The relations between the U.S. and Japan now is to get more mature relations for the for the joint operations. Uh, we are still on the way, but our <coughs> military cooperation is getting much closer than ever. And also, we build new capabilities uh, thanks to the good support from the United States. That is particularly the important one is the missile defense capability as well as the um, amphibious warfare capability. So, uh, the current situation as you see, a difficult in Northeast Asia, but uh, we have to wait and see what's going to happen over the Korean Peninsula. The important thing is, as uh, I'm explaining this nowadays, is the time was meaningful <coughs> for the North Korean side so far because they spent times, days, years for the development of the nuclear warheads as well as the ICBM capabilities. But now they are about to be completed. In other words, what else they can do from now on? Of course, there could be chances for modernization, but it takes much more time to be completed. While the US, Japan, and others finally made it quite clear uh, through the United Nations Security Council that we are determined to give sanctions against North Korea. Of course, the menu was quite clear proposed by the United, uh, excuse me, the United States as a security council. The real policy now adopted is sure because of the compromise with China and Russia, but still made it quite clear that what we are going to do against North Korea. So that means time is rather on our side now. North Korea is facing the difficulty of shortage of money, shortage of uh, lack of import in many ways. Therefore, within a few years, North Korea is going to face the difficult situation. How to live together this North Korea and how to convince them to give up the current nuclear initiative is going to be a very difficult homework for us to do. But at least that is something uh, that we have to pay attention and also that is something that new environment of security conditions in North East Asia. So I'm just stop uh, my presentation now and back to Rally. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nisan. And uh, for our next speaker is uh, David Shear. Uh, David was a career foreign service officer. We served together in Tokyo, as a matter of fact, and uh, uh, rose uh, to very senior levels and became uh, the, our ambassador to Vietnam. Um, he was also, um, most recently, the S Assistant Secretary of, uh, of Defense for, East, for Asia Pacific at the, uh, at the Defense Department, and is now, and just uh, last year, has become the chairman, one of his hats is, uh, he's the chairman of the National Association of Japan America so uh, <coughs> Societies, in Japan, so it's a kind of a, an umbrella association uh, that uh, our society and others belong to. So we're uh, delighted to have David Shear here to, to talk about defense uh, and U.S. and Japan uh, security alliance. David. Thank you very much, uh, Larry, and thanks for inviting me to speak tonight. 
It's always great to get out of Washington when the temperature is below 20 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> and come to Palo Alto, where it's, it's uh, not only nice weather, but it's a beautiful place. So thanks again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start by covering sort of the broad development in U.S.-Japan bilateral defense relations, right? Please. Okay. Um, and then, then I'll move to um, looking at U.S.-Japan relations in the East Asian regional context, if that's okay. Um, and with regard to the broad development of U.S.-Japan defense relations, I'm going to speak to you from a very personal standpoint, because I've been working on U.S.-Japan defense relations since I joined the Foreign Service in 1982. My first assignment uh, in the Foreign Service was to Sapporo in Hokkaido, where I was a vice consul. Uh, and while I was there, we had the KAL 007 shoot down by the Soviets. I also helped a Soviet ballet dancer defect to the West, <laughs> in addition to stamping visas most of the time. Uh, but um, uh, later on in 1992-94, I worked on political and military affairs. <laughs> Just very briefly. So um, I worked throughout my career um, in Japan on several different assignments. Um, a lot of it has been on political military affairs and building the bilateral defense relationship. And um, at least since the 1990s, uh, the 1970s, the, the general thrust of U.S. defense policies vis-a-vis -vis Japan was not only to station forces in Japan um, for the purpose of maintaining stability in the region and defending Japan, but um, our general thrust also was to encourage the Japanese to play a larger role in the region, to strengthen their own defense capabilities, and to uh, 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 develop a stronger cooperation, military to military, with the United States. And this started as Mr. Nishi, this started in earnest, as Mr. Nishi suggested, in 1978, with the release of the first U.S.-Japan bilateral defense guidelines. And we have expanded the, the, the area of military to military and defense cooperation ever since. And I was um, honored uh, uh, to have uh, helped negotiate the 1996 bilateral defense guidelines, and I was honored again in uh, 2014 to have op overseen the American side um, in the negotiation of the 2014 uh, defense guidelines. And in each, in each uh, ef effort in these guidelines, we have uh, sought to strengthen U.S.-Japan cooperation. First, in the late 1970s, on uh, cooperation with regard to a Soviet attack, Soviet contingency. And you would think that um, allies plan, train, and operate together militarily naturally, but that was not the case with the U.S. and Japan. Um, Japan started out defeated in war and took a while to come back. It had strong domestic political constraints on what it could do in terms of uh, its own defense and in terms of cooperation with the U.S. So our goal has been to um, uh, stretch the envelope um, for decades. And we have had great success in doing it. First, in, with the 1978 guidelines, vis-a-vis -vis a Soviet contingency. Then with the 1996 guidelines, mainly focused on the possibility of war on the Korean Peninsula. And then, in the 2014 guidelines, we expanded cooperation, basically regionally. Japan took on new responsibilities, including potential <coughs> defense of U.S. forces, um, U.S. territory. So we, we've seen this, this gradual evolution in the alliance from um, what was basically uh, one in which uh, the U.S. had overwhelming influence in the alliance. Um, Japan focused primarily on defense, uh, procuring defensive articles and defending Japan, in which uh, the U.S. Um, focused on uh, uh, offense, offensive weaponry and um, uh, projecting power into the region from Japan, uh, both in defense of Japan and playing a larger regional role. So you've seen this, this gradual but very important evolution in the extent to which we have cooperated 